Hi everyone, please excuse my tired face. It's the next morning and I realized that I didn't film an intro for the video that you're about to see. Nonetheless, I am super excited about this video because I'm having my very first guest and it's not just any guest, it is the Bishop Floyd Jarvis. So I'm so honored that he even took some time off just to agree to this video with me. So um, do enjoy, it's already a bit lengthy, so I don't wanna to spend too long here, but get a pen and a notepad because you're gonna to want to write down every single thing he says. Stay to the end because I assure you every single thing he is saying, you want to hear and you need it in your life. I hope you guys enjoy this topic. Leave a comment if you learned something so I know. And um, if you're new, do subscribe, hit the like button, share if you wish, I'd appreciate it. Okay, let's get into it. Hi, Bishop Jarvis. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited that you're here. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about purpose, but first, why don't you tell everyone a little bit, a little bit about yourself? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Floyd Jarvis. Um, my middle name is Elvis. So my uncle named me Floyd Elvis because Floyd Patterson was heavyweight champion of the world and Elvis was king of rock and roll. Um, I thank the Lord for saving me. I got saved at a young age, 17, started pastoring at 19. Uh, pastored my first church for uh, nine years um, in Guyana, South Assembly. And then I um, came to the United States, uh, raised four children. Um, first marriage, I'm widowed and remarried. Um, so like Abraham, I have the opportunity to have married uh, two wives, which is another aspect of the apostolic realm. And um, I, I, I have a wife and I manage a family of, well, not managed, but I have a family of um, seven, I should say. All right, seven children. All right, seven children, one wife, um, four set, and this set, and that's me. Um, I function as a bishop with apostolic grace upon my life and uh, with a prophetic flair. Traveled um, a lot of the southern world, and that is Africa, ministering uh, to the nations from Malawi all the way down to South Africa. I'm an only child. That's it. Um, whatever else people need to know, um, there is always Google. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so excited that I was able to come into contact with you. And when I um, thought of this um, topic, I, I couldn't think of anyone else better to um, shed some light on it or give us some knowledge because you're always sharing knowledge. Thanks. And um, I think so many young people, right, are in search of their purpose or they don't know what their purpose is. I know I've had so many people or younger people like myself um, I've had so many talks with them about purpose and it's always, I don't know, it's not always clear, especially, I don't think I'm always clear on it either because I was a bit confused myself mm. on what purpose is or how, if, how do I know if I'm in my purpose and questions like that. So um, maybe if you can tell us first, what is purpose? I mean, I know, of course, there's like a Google definition. So like... What is this, like when someone says, do you know your purpose or what is your purpose? What, what do they mean? <laughs> well, sometimes the person that is even asking the question doesn't even know their purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole purpose thing um, came around um, quite a number of years ago. I think the late Dr. Miles Monroe started talking about purpose. All right. Oh, by the way, I've never read any of... Um, Dr. Miles' books or anybody's book for that matter that's spoken purpose. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to speak out of my spirit man and some of the things that I've, I've, I've accumulated um, all along. Uh, let me jump into it right away by saying this. People say, I want to get into my purpose. You, you hear that thing a lot. I want, I, want to get, I want to walk in my purpose. Amen. And I have to line this up with knowing God, okay? But, but people say, oh, I, 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 I want to know my purpose. As if purpose was a destination. I want to get into my purpose. As if, okay, I'm going to get there. That's why you, peop you, 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 you meet people who never get into their purpose. 
because they think it's a destination. They think it's a place that you're going to go. And when you get there, listen, when, you, when you're ready to get into that kind of purpose, you're going to be old. In Zen, you're 89 and you hear people talking, I want to walk in my purpose. I think purpose is a constant walk. But it's walking in alignment with what God wants you to be. You can be working, walking at your purpose in, 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 at age 10. You may not know it. But depending on who had the covering over you and depending on how they lined you up, depending on how much they poured in or imparted in your life, uh, according to your monk, your monk that they may have spoken into your life, they may set you in motion to constantly not get into your purpose, but constantly grow in your purpose because you're in there and you grow, you grow. Look at us. We went to school and we had teachers and they poured into our lives. You had our parents. All of those people were pouring in to making us what we are supposed to be. Amen. Um, like, like somebody said, we are, we, are, we are an amalgamation of every book that we've read, every school that we've been to, every, every place that we normally traverse, um, whether it's, it's the train, that route, that route that you use to go to work to school, all that over time, you go to high school for four years, all that access to those teachers every day, speaking, doing history, geography, science, and all, they are pouring into them. So what's happening? You're actually being patterned, patterned, shaped, pruned into getting to where you want to be. But then there comes a juncture a more serious juncture where you're going to stop being everything and you want to know the unique thing that you're going to be. Lots of times, most of us never get into that one unique thing that you're going to be. All right. Why do I say that? Uh, you run into a guy who, who has been a doctor for years. I'm listening to a guy on the radio, um, on, on, on the radio, on, on, on the internet, Dr. Dr. Gun, Gundy or Gundry or something. He's been a, a medical doctor for many, many, many years. And you would have thought, oh, Dr. Gundry, I like going to his practice because he has helped me in so many, many, many things. Well, Dr. Gundry has been saying for a couple of years that all the years that he's been a doctor, he never knew some things that he knows now. So he stopped believing in some of the things that he was practicing. All right. And he's now concentrating on another something. And he's saying it as if he felt he wasted a lot of his years. But what happened to him is this. Even those years that he thought that he might have wasted, those things were packaging, pushing, elbowing him, nudging him into being that, per that person that he is today. So purpose for me is a constant walk. But during that walk, there will be peace. Oh, hallelujah. During that walk, there is going to be calm. During that, that walk, you're going to find that you're constantly getting better and better and better. A good sign to know if you're not walking your purpose is if you're constantly digressing. If, you, if you're constantly upset, bored, fed up, nothing productive is happening in your life. You're just living. You eat food. You understand? You go to the bathroom, you sleep, you wake up, but there is no joy. When a person is walking in, in their purpose, if we want to term that, if, they want, if they're walking in their purpose, there is going to be joy. There is going to be peace in what you do. Not that you have arrived at the thing, but in the constantly doing of the thing that you're doing, you get into more things. And that's a sure sign that you're walking in your purpose because it gets better and better and better. You know. I think there was a singer, Andre Crouch, the late Andre Crouch, that says, if it keeps getting better and better, I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's walking in your right, purpose. You said, okay, yep. three things. Stuck mm -hmm. yep. One, you said it's a journey. It's a journey. You said some people never get to that one thing. And then you said with the doctor, certain things was nudging him into his purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And then you also said... Um, that you would know if you're in your purpose if you're getting joy. Mm. So is it possible that I can be getting joy out of things that's not like, I'm, and I'm still not in my purpose? Like, how do I know? Like, 
Okay, John. You may be having happiness. You may be having happiness. So is that the only way you know, like, okay, I'm walking in my purpose? Because, like, I always thought it was, like, something that had to do with, like, a talent. Like, okay, I'm good at this thing, then it could, like, okay, this is my purpose, to do this thing. Like, people, if you're good with, like, or, like, you care for people and those things, it's like, okay, you're going to be a good nurse or something like that. And you think, okay, then this is... Like, That's why I shared the Dr. Gundry thing. Mm -hmm. Because he was a medical doctor for many years. For 30 something years. And you would have thought, wow, I admire the, I admire this guy. I, I like going to his clinic. I like he, you know, how he has discussions with me. I like the medication he's been prescribing for me for quite a number of years. Mm -hmm. Only to realize that he was constantly growing and becoming and getting better until he's now talking about something called leaky gut. He felt that he has found the thing that he's supposed to be talking about. So some people, like you mentioned just now, um, they're talking about walking in their purpose. And you mentioned if joy is the only thing, they may have what I call happiness. Because happiness is dependent on things that goes on around you. But joy is deeper. And, and since you know, you're, you're a believer, um, and I am too, I cannot have this conversation without including the God factor. You know, it's difficult for me to talk about purpose now without including the God factor. Now, lots of people who have found their purpose do not believe in what we believe, but it doesn't mean that they haven't found their purpose. People are coming out with, with, with technological um, ideas and feats and look how it has blessed and ministered to the whole world. Um, but you would think that that person thought of that thing all the time. Some people stumbled on it. Look at what's her name, um, Ruth. Ruth came back from, uh, I think, Bethlehem, Judah. Poor, you know, as they say, poor, you know, poor as, as, as a church mouse. And it was riffraff. She was hanging out with another girl. Both of their husbands died. And one went back to her country. All right, and her mother-in-law was telling her, "Hey, there isn't anything here for you. Um, you know, your husband died, um, and that was after ten years. You hear me always say ten is the number of change. After ten years, both husbands died. All three, as a matter of fact, the the, the woman's husbands died. Naomi, Ruth's husband died, and Orpha, husband died, and that's it. And she was coming back to um." To, to in the land of Moab, which there wasn't great expectation in the land of Moab. That was it for her. But she happened to go out one day and would work in the field of a man called Boaz. Let me mention something about covering, about spiritual covering. I think for purpose to be uh, formed well in people, there should be some form of mentorship. Ruth had Naomi covering over her. Paul had Timothy. I mean, Timothy had Paul over him. Elisha had Elijah following over him. So you look at the people who became great. Look who was over them. As tough as Saul was, David spent some time in Saul's house. And Jonathan... Saul's son helped prepare David for kingdom things and kingdom principles. So lots of times people come into their purpose depending on who they would have had access to. That person would have been pouring into their lives over time. Ruth had Naomi because it was Naomi that said to her, um, girl, why don't you go out and glean today and, you know, see what's up. I know you're sitting in a house like COVID-19. Um, you're sitting in a house and nothing is going on. Um, why don't you go and glean, etc.? You know, see what's going on. Because of the relationship that she had with uh, Naomi, had with, Ruth had with Naomi, she listened to her. She obeyed her. She understood the law of subjection. And she did what the old woman said to her to do. And she went out there. And then the scripture says, <laughs> she just happened. Oh, hallelujah. I can preach this. 
she, she just happened to go and glean on a patch of ground that belonged to Boaz, which was in line with her next of kin, which was Elimelech, or, 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 or if I got the name right. So sometimes people are not, rebellious people have a slim chance of walking in their purpose. People who are unteachable have a slim chance of working, walking in their purpose. People who don't want to listen, who, people who are up in their head already and think that they know it all, they're not going to get into their purpose. Or they could, if those mistakes and errors take place in their lives because of not listening and because of not following and because of not having somebody speak into their life, when those mistakes would have been corrected now, and they come to a place to say, you know what, um, I think I got ahead of myself, you know, uh, like the prodigal son, you know, he was up at himself, but then he came to the point, he says, you know what, mm -mm, this ain't working. I, I, I will arise. I'm going to go back to my father. I, I'm going to, I'm going to admit some things. And um, because I, I'm, I'm getting, I, I'm being derailed and I'm not as aligned as I was with my purpose. I'm getting derailed. I'm going off track. You know what? Um, nah, let me come back in line. So lots of people may have been on their purpose, like the prodigal son, so to speak, but they got derailed. Hmm. They never got into it. The father was there looking for him. You know, by the way, the prodigal son story wasn't really about sin. It was about fatherhood. It was about forgiveness. It was about mentorship. It was about uh, purpose, if, if I can add to that. He came back. He got aligned with his father again. And guess what? His name is in the book. All right? A long, long, long story. So it has to do with who is speaking into your life. So are you saying it's not something I have to seek out? Say that? Are you saying it's not something that I have to go in, like, in seek of or to seek out? Yeah, you can seek out. You, you can seek out. You can seek out your purpose. Um... It's a mixture of some of those things I've said already. Let's take um, Jabez. You know the story of Jabez. If, if, if Jabez did not seek out or cry out, we would never know the guy. Hmm. He would just be one of those 300 and something uh, millions of people in America. He would have been one of the seven point what, seven, eight billion people in the world. And we don't know anything. But one he wasn't happy with what was happening in his life. He felt like many people, he wasn't walking in his purpose. Why? Because he didn't like his name. He did not like the circumstances under which he was raised or brought up. He didn't like his surroundings. He wasn't happy about it. And what he did, he called out to God to change his circumstances. And guess what? I don't know if you heard the story. God answered. <laughs> and we got to know Jabez. So books are written about him today as what? The prayer of Jabez, the life of Jabez. So you can call out to God and ask him, Lord, show me. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, show me. Show me. Show me your way. If you look through the Psalms and look through the life of some of the prophets, etc., you're going to see them at, at some junctures calling out to God and asking him, Lord, help me. Lord, show me. And then God brings direction. Hmm. And boom. You find your purpose. Let, let's take me, for instance. Um, I, I've always wanted, and pro probably you are one of the first of, of, of the types of this new um, thing that I'm doing now in my life. Um, I've served the law for a long, long years. And um, I've always wanted to do this. But I, I, I wasn't waiting on an opportunity to do this, to speak on uh, uh, mentorship on a platform. Hello? in the now day, in the now world, I was constantly doing stuff. Getting married, raising children, planting churches around the world. But wherever I went, whether it was Malawi or Botswana, or I was out on the road today, I am always pouring into people. I was, I'm always doing, I'm not looking for some, some day now, so you know, I'm not doing certain things because um, I don't think that's what God wants me to do. There are lots of things that I'm doing right now that I know I, I don't like doing, but because I know what my purpose is in God, I keep doing some of those small, small stuff because I know that sooner, more sooner than later, 
the day will come when I'll be able to pour into the lives of hundreds of thousands of youth like I'm doing now. Are you there? There isn't much I can tell people that are of my age. I'm 63 years old. Amen. There isn't much I can tell guys and gals. All right. And, and, and to make it rough, I don't want to tell them anything much. All right. I want to talk to you because you're 20 something. I mean, I can be your father three times over. All right. But when I do that, I multiply myself, but I also multiply you because you're hearing about this at a time when I did not hear it at my age. So I'm helping you walk at a higher level of multiplicity. And I didn't have to wait. You called me. Hello? You called me. I, I wasn't even praying and asking God for me, oh Lord, show me your purpose. Because I know what it is. I'm an apostle. I'm here to pour into the lives of the nations. And it's going to come in varying streams. And when it happens, I would know. And that keeps you happy. That keeps you joyful. Because you're not moping and saying, oh man. I can't wait for this to happen. I'm not waiting for anything to happen. I'm the event. You can't wait on the event. You have to become the event. You can't wait for the show. You have to show up. Amen? You can't wait for the dance. You have to start dancing. You can't wait for music to dance. You have to do your own tunes with your mouth in your hands because you know that you're walking in your zone, in your realm, in your purpose in God. Okay. Yep. So what if, I don't know, I don't know if this would even make sense, but what if, let's say you never see God's direction before you did certain things. Let's say you went into school, you studied a certain topic or um, major, and now you're out of school, you're finished, and let's say, I don't know, maybe, the, does these things all contribute, like how it nudged the doctor into his purpose? Let's say you didn't... Um, seek God out for any of these things and now you're at this place and you're wondering am I even in my purpose like what do you do then do you now see God when you're at that place now you seek him and then he starts to when you come to that juncture of realizing um, I call it uh, the dark night of the soul all right it's not my phrase I heard that when I was a young uh, pastor when you come to that place call it the dark night of the soul you say Mr. Jarvis what's the dark night of the soul the dark night of the soul is the time in your life, in your experiences, mm -hmm. when everything that you were taught and told to do and you did is not working. Study, go to school, da, da, da. you do everything, but then there's no fulfillment. You are in the dark night of the soul. And sometimes you're praying and nothing is, is happening because God is not answering. The only thing that takes you out of the dark night of the soul is something called praise. Because praise is talking to God but it's not asking him for anything. It is telling him, I am available for you to do what I can't do and to help me understand what I don't understand about myself because I don't know what to do. I don't know what to be. Uh, you know, the rich young ruler came to Jesus and you know, said, oh, how can I, or what can I do to inter inhabit eternal life? All right, so sometimes you can do everything that you do, but nothing is working. That's the dark night of the soul. All right. Some people cry out and they talk to God. Nothing is happening. Start praising him. Thanking him for who he is. Thanking him for what he's done so far. You could have died before graduating school. You could have died before finishing high school. Amen. So don't be miserable. Thank him for the juncture that he's brought you up to. And ask him to show you the way. You look at the psalmist David, why he's a beloved person. He was always asking God to show him the way. Amen. He was king, you know. He was the man. But he was always asking God, Lord, show me the way. Is this the way to go? Should I go up and fight them? Should I, are you going to help me if I go up in the mountains? Are you going to help me if I go up in the valleys? Help me. And God would always talk to him through the prophets. God would always show him the way. Amen. And of a lot of names that are named around the world, there are quite a lot of Davids because his name still rings today. I hope I answered that question. Your volume went down again. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it ever too late then? Is it ever too late to, to start in the earth? If you thought you've your years of just doing things that are not fulfilling, is it ever too late to start or to ask God? Like, what if you're it's older? never too late. It's never too late. Um, it, it, it's never too late. <clears throat> How can I explain this? It's never too late to come to the realization that perhaps you missed it. 
it's never too late for you to do as much as you can do with a little time that you have. See, that's why that's why the Bible says, um, uh, it says two things. It says train up a child in the way that a child ought to go, so that when the child gets older, he wouldn't depart from the ways. Amen. And there is another scripture that said, um, um, which is the one I use this now. Train up a child. All right. Now, oh, the next one is remember now the Creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil day comes comes not, and you're going to say, I have no pleasure. You don't want to wait until you're older to start aligning with your purpose. Because like I said, it's difficult to talk about this outside of the, the things of God. The Bible says and shows you the advantage of youth. You can't do certain things with a grown plant. Amen. I can run fast, but now not for long. Amen. When I was 25, I could run. When I was 18, I could run. When I was 15, I could run. Hello, I used to be a 100 meter sprinter. I can't dare thinking about stuff like that now. So it's important for you to know and sense your calling. I felt the calling in my life when I was 14 years old. I didn't know the terminology, but I knew I was an unusual guy. I, I knew that something was, was, was about me. If I had like school girlfriends, you know, clean, you know, stuff, no non-sex girlfriends, you know, those good friend girlfriends that you like, they were always older than me by two years. Always, you know, which, which told me, and I get to realize that later, that my brain and, and my capacity was above guys my peers' age. Amen? Because the girls that I liked or that liked me, all right, and if a girl likes you, it's better for you because perhaps she sees the maturity in you. All right? She wants to talk to you. She doesn't want to talk to guys her age. All right, but she wants to talk to you, which means that something was happening in me. So I started singing. I had a good voice. I still do by the grace of God. I started singing. But, but now I, I'm an apostle. But God did not tell me at age 14 I was going to be an apostle. He started me where I was. All right, every person has something right now in their hand to start their destiny walk. You got something right now. You got a coin right now. You have a fish right now you have a talent right now you have looks right now you have ideas right now but you have to use them a lot of people make the mistake because they wait until some time to use the stuff and you're getting old and the coin the coin gets rusty and it gets lost use it now so as i started singing started singing i'm going to church i'm committing my life to the lord i'm sucking up the word amen i'm learning the psalms and the proverbs started singing i started singing before crowds amen when i was like 17 18 i started singing before crowds and at 19 guess what happened i passed in my first church but i felt something at 14 but it wasn't that oh you're going to be a mighty man of god it wasn't um you're going to go all around to malawi botswana and congo kinshasa I'm pretty sure no 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 i i wanted to sing i started singing and God used me singing. Then I started singing at concerts in front of hundreds. And people would give their lives to the Lord. Amen. Then, then I started, I decided, you know, I was going to go to Bible school. Little by little, little by little, I really was in my purpose. I was walking in my purpose. I wasn't walking to get into my purpose. Uh, where I lived, um, there are lots of young men and women my age. And I came from a community called Karakara. All right. But at the moment, I don't know of anyone. I'm not bragging here, by the way. I don't know of anyone that has traveled to do the work of God that extensively as I have from that little Karakara that I came from. But guess what? I felt the call of God right there. Right there. Lot 26 Karakara, Lot 9 Karakara, and some other places. I felt that thing, and I started singing. I started writing little songs. I started doing that when, when uh, I was in high school. I started making songs with my mouth, you know, and, and started develop, developing little things that might look silly, you know. There was a song I remember called, um, I can say it, people know it if they're still alive. It's called Stick By Me, you know, and the, the rhythm would go like the do-ga-dum-dum, do-ga-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-dum-
You see? So I started doing my little things. But now I realize that it kept me joyful for years until I began singing to greater crowds and outside of the, the, my, loca my locale into other places. But I was walking constantly, constantly in my purpose. Today, I'm talking to you. Hello. Wow. I don't even know what to say after that. Ah, say something. With Pastor Jarvis, what if it seems... I mean, or I guess you just answered that when you said that you we all have something. Because, like, what if it seems too big? I know that's like <laughs> a dumb question. But what if it seems like, oh, you're supposed to be... I don't know, this important... You're supposed to do this important thing. Like, how do you even know where to start? Like, do you just... Work, do whatever you're already doing, or you work from the known to the unknown. You should write that down. Whoever is listening, write that down. You work from the known to the unknown. You don't know the unknown. I think too many people want to get into the unknown. They, they want to be this big thing, or they feel that they're going to be this big thing. You work from the known to the unknown. You work 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen. You work from faith to faith glory to glory that that's that's how you go uh, i want to mention something now secondly if it scares you perhaps it's a good thing because that's what happened with everybody in scripture that god was going to call into something big they doubted they said i can't speak uh, why don't you send this other person um i'm not from that recognized family we are poor. We don't have money. Um, what are you up to? Like, God, do you know what you're really doing? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It can overwhelm you. But the fact, oh my gosh, the fact that you can dream it and think it, you can do it. Why would God put that dream in you? Why would he put those sedimental stuff in you for you to say, nah, it's too big? That's when you call on him. Thirdly, there is something called new heights fear whoever's listening should write that down new heights fear when you're going to approach something new something big it's going to knock the socks off your feet that's if you wear socks it's going to knock the stockings off your feet if you wear stockings but it's going to make you like oh my god I don't no 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 no. i don't think i can do this i don't know no this is too much i can't take it it's good for you to go through new height sphere some people never go through new height sphere or when they do the fear crushes them no you got to overcome that fear you got to overcome that mountain you, you don't own perhaps you don't own your first vehicle as yet amen but when you get your first car and you start driving you are going to be scared that oh my gosh i don't know if did i do the right thing here by buying this car and then you pass by your college and you see some of your friends standing by the sidewalk and you pull up and you begin to think, oh my gosh, I, I wonder what they're going to think about me. Maybe, oh God, I don't want them to think that I'm showing off because um, that's new height sphere. And every stage you go, you're going to go through new height sphere. But that fear dies when you step on it and drive the car. Amen. Then you move from car, you want a truck. Amen. And you move from there, you want a convertible. You're always going to people on the side sidewalk of apathy saying oh, i don't know what she wants with that why is she doing that they are not in your purpose or if they are they are to oppose you which is good mm -hmm. they are to nudge you which is good they're there to criticize you which is good if someone kicks you on the butt it's a good thing that's why the butt is behind no one ever got kicked on the butt and fell backwards Anytime you get kicked in the butt, you go forward. You may fall, but you never go back. So you take the criticism, all right? You, you take, if you turn around, sometimes you're going to hear what people are saying about you. But it's okay. The ears are not in front. Amen? But still it hears from the side. It hears a lot of things, but you can't listen to that. You got to keep going. Go through the new height sphere. Go through the things that you don't understand. Stay on your knees. Work with what you're doing. Keep doing, always doing something. 
God is going to constantly unfold his will, his works, his ways. And that big thing becomes a joyful thing. That big thing becomes your thing. And then you own the thing. Mm -hmm. You're dropping so many gems. I feel like I, one, I needed a pen and a paper. Yeah. Well, it's recorded. Thank God. When I was your age, um, we didn't have the video stuff to do this. And we didn't have Zoom to do this. Um, you can always go back and make Jatins, you know. We didn't have cell phones, only the government had cell phones and certain governments um, had cell phones. But now um, you, can, you can go back to information. You know, George Floyd um, would have gone down the drain, the whole story. Amen. Just like, you know, white officers was doing for like years, 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 years. But guess what? There's telephone now. Amen. And you can see everything that used to happen that can happen. So thank God, you know, you make your own notes. All right. And if I was lying, sometimes it's difficult for you to tell. But with video, you can see the expression on my face. Amen. You can see, um, you know, years ago, you, you're older than this. Um, when Nixon, there was a man called President Nixon, when he was doing the Watergate thing, and he was before, I don't know if it's Congress, or he was speaking before the nation. All right. And he was delineating some things. And one guy said, uh, oh, at that time, Nixon was saying, I'm not a crook. I'm not a crook. But a, a man said, Jesse, um, Jesse Ventura. Um, uh, Jesse said, uh, is it Jesse Ventura? Former governor, all right? His father told him that Nixon was lying. He said, how do you know he's lying, Dad? His father said, he's sweating on his nose. The video helps you to see the expression. All right. So although I might have been talking to you and telling you a whole lot of things, with this technology, which was somebody's idea, you can see the expression as against what I'm actually saying. And you know that you, you're getting somewhere, you're learning, because you can pick up the attitude of the person that's saying the thing. So you're in a good time, and this that you're doing here is a good thing. Perhaps you're in your purpose already. Amen? Just look at us now. Amen? Wow, I feel like you answered all of my questions without me even asking you questions. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But I really think that you did drop a lot of gems, and I really appreciate you coming on here to share your knowledge. I am going to put your um, YouTube channel in my bio so everyone could be exposed to more of that knowledge. And I'm really glad that um, God was able to put me in your, um, I guess, your circle. I'm not sure if that's the correct word. That's but I'm really, good. really glad to be learning from you and really honored that you were um that you even agreed to this. Amen. I'm pretty well, sure thanks for the opportunity to Amen. share with the nations. I'm a nations person. I'm not a one country guy, mm-hmm. one church, one city person. I'm here to touch nations and and this and YouTube has provided a platform that we can touch nations and help young people all over the world. Amen. So thanks. I hope this won't be your last time. You're welcome to come on many more times and share all the knowledge because I'm always here to receive. And I'm sure so many more people are um, are willing to be on. Um, okay. Well, I'm a mannerly person, so I'm going to wait for the invitation. <laughs> My mom told me that good no, manners is attractive. Because I'm going to invite you way too many times and you're going to get tired of me. Oh, no, I'm not going to get tired, you know. Um, no. I'm going to find a way. If it's for the Lord's work, I'm going to find a way. We're going to touch the world change it amen amen thank you so much lord bless you lord bless you listeners okay